Hi everyone, Manuel Marcajani from Isomer Skincare. Welcome to this episode of Confessions of a Cosmetic Chemist. I love this one because this one, I am an animal lover. I, I, I actually wanted to be a veterinarian. So I was on my way to be a veterinarian. I became a uh, cosmetic chemist, who knew? But I've always been a pet owner and a pet lover. And so today I am happy to welcome Gabby from Healing Hearts. She's got a fantastic, fantastic business that she has created, the first, um, to really help take health care for our pets to a different level. So welcome Thank to you. the program. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> So what is it that you do? Yeah, so um, I do a mobile uh, physical rehab therapy for dogs and cats all across Southern Ontario and the GTA. So it's for the animal itself? For the animal itself, yeah. So I don't actually, like, a lot of people always ask me, oh, do you do for humans too? No, <laughs> just dogs and cats. <laughs> so you actually, so this is actually a service for the animal. So how would you yeah. know that your dog or cat needs... Yeah, so it's there's so many different signs, um, but honestly, I, I work with all life stages of pets. So even if it's just for general maintenance, like everyday like use, um, even for like dogs and cats that have nothing wrong with them, they're normal, happy, healthy. Um, just like us, we see our doctors, we see our chiropractors, our massage therapists. Not because something's wrong with us, but just to maintain the general maintenance of our body, right? So I do the same thing for dogs and cats as well. Um, but for other issues, I deal with orthopedic issues and neurological issues. So if they're having some sort of ailment at home, or if they see the vet for something um, we help deal with that so like broken bones and um, ligaments and tears um, definitely helping with uh, IVDD like neurological disorders and uh, cervical spine disorders things like that um, but we also deal with just everyday couch potatoes at home we deal with athletic dogs working dogs sports dogs um, as well as like show animals and show cats and things like that too right so right yeah how'd you get into this yeah so um, I started I started working in the animal industry since I was 12. Like, okay. right when I was 12 years old, I started volunteering in animal clinics, volunteering in shelters, um, working at animal hospitals uh, right from the ground up. So working as a receptionist and assistant all throughout my lifetime through school and everything. Um, went to college, got my veteran technician degree, started working as a registered vet tech for about six years, then COVID hit. Yeah. And everyone lost their jobs and everyone was panicking. And I thought, well, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna go back to doing the same thing or am I gonna do something different? And I, I wanted to be an entrepreneur my whole life. Okay. I was like, I want to do something different. So I found the rehab course up north and I thought, you know what, this is the perfect start for me. Something different, something that's still within the vet med medical field, but I'm not working for someone else, I'm working for myself, right? And uh, I was able to do that. I went to the rehab course, um, finished that, graduated with honors, and then used the honor and scholarship money I got from the program to start Healing Hearts. And yeah, the rest is history. I, I looked into it, I did some market research. There's no other mobile practices in all of Canada, so I'm the first one to start it. I love the mobile practice. Right? I, I think that that makes so much sense. I mean, tuxedo, I, I've had dogs my whole life. Right? Since <laughs> I was 10 years old, I've always yeah. had a pet. Yeah. Sometimes three. <laughs> um, <laughs> but. Uh, when I started getting pets that were a little bit more maintenance and, and grooming, yeah, the first thing I did was I found a guy called Glamour Pets in Toronto, oh, yeah, and he yeah. was in a little ambulance, a renovated ambulance, and he would come to your driveway. Oh and yes, so it was mobile grooming, and I, I think that, that was the best thing because it's, it's the way of the future is mobile services. Like everyone's so busy nowadays. You've got your kids, you've got your job, your family, home life, everything. No one has time to pick up their dog and take them somewhere, right? Or take their cat somewhere. Have you ever tried to put a cat in a carrier? It's mm -hmm. like no, it's 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 imagine. a lot. You know, I'm <laughs> sure it's it, it, a lot of cats don't like. The, a lot of cats and dogs don't do well in cars. They get car sick, they get nervous, um, you're stuck in traffic, and it's just it's a nightmare, right? It's just so. the stress and anxiety of getting there on time, For dropping sure. them off, finding the parking, going yes. in, going out. It's like, okay, yeah. you're coming to us. Yeah. There's so much more calm to it. Yes, and it's the home environment, right? And the, the pets already know that that's their home and that's their place, and they can feel safe and comfortable. And I'm entering in, I, I book out extra time for all of my clients so that the patients can take as much time as they need to get used to me, used to the machines, used to the sounds and everything, especially for the first sessions. We usually do about three, four hour first sessions just to get them kind of used to stuff because wow. we want to make sure that it's a fun experience both for the client and the patient itself, right? And it's inclusive. They get to sit there with their pets. Like a lot of clinics and other places you go to, it's still the curbside where you have to drop off your pet, you have to wait in the car, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't like that. I want them to be a part of the whole experience, you know? Like this is something, for a bonding time for for them as an owner, right? So 
I want to make sure that they're able to see everything and be involved and give their pets some treats while I'm working on them. It's a great little experience, right? But this is, but but for you as a business owner, so you're starting this because I mean, COVID, COVID, I think was a big um, kick for everybody. For sure, yeah. Everybody changed. Yeah. You know? They said, okay, I'm going to change that. I'm going to pivot. I'm going to do this. So you yeah. stayed in being in, in the animal world, you know, being part of that vet tech kind of idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. No I, just, I just forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it happens. It, it happens. Animal world was my life, you know. Yeah. I, I had devoted my life and my medical career to helping pets, right? And I wanted to continue doing that. But at, nearing the end of my veteran career, when COVID happened, it was almost like a sign from the universe. And I would right. never say COVID was a good thing because it was definitely not a good thing. But it was um, a readjustment, it, it that's for sure. It definitely was almost like a catalyst for the changing of my life, yes. right? And when I was coming to the end of it, I was dealing with compassion fatigue and there was a lot of, uh, you know, emotional and physical things going on with myself and with the field. And I, like I said, for all, almost my whole life, I was doing it, right? right? So I was kind of reaching the end and I was like, I was so sad because this was my passion. This was everything I ever wanted to do. And and all of a sudden, overnight, it was like everything was just kind of thrown out from under me. And I still wanted to give back and to help the community and to help pets. Like, what am I going to do? So when I found the rehab course. It was like a sign. You know, it was like, this is exactly what I want to do. And when I moved up north and I started doing the program, um, and I'm working through and working with all the uh, class patients and everything, I was like, this is the answer. This has been the answer all along. Like, I'm actually doing something to help the pet, right? Because when I was working in clinic, we would do surgery, pharmaceutical medication, narcotics, and that's it, right? And right. I'd always be like, there has to be something more we can do because these pets have the side effects from long-term use of the medications. And sure, it's great for surgery, meds, vaccines, all that's fantastic. We have to do that for our pets. But over time, like, you know, it just, it starts to take a toll on their body and they need something as an alternative for that. And um, I always thought there has to be something more. So when I found it, I'm like, this has th been the answer all along and I'm surprised no one's heard about it or talked about it. So that's why I'm trying to help spread the word about alternative no, I think therapies. Sp alternative therapy, yeah. I think spreading the word. And I do think having that in-home care is really important and mm -hmm. having that that quiet time because yeah. they do get stressed out and anxious. They don't really know what's going on. And you're For taking sure. them to this, the vet, and the vet yeah. is always where they they lose a body part or something. <laughs> or something you know? happens, yeah. They get <laughs> poked and prodded, get poked something and gets prodded. stuck up their butt. Yeah, they're, no, they're, it's not a good time, right? So this is a different kind of feeling for them. Yes, definitely. But also, um, as a parent, as, yeah. a do as, a, as an animal parent, you you can be part of that as well. Yes. So it's you're not so removed. It's yes. not so scary. For sure, right? And that's why I like being inclusive because they can see everything, right? And they can ask questions and they have someone that they can have that resource to reach out to, right? I mean, I'm available 24-7 for my clients. I mean, wow. I've got clients that I, I go to clients' houses at midnight or 1 a.m. because they have night shifts. So uh -huh. the only time they're available is at night, but it's, there's still pets still need to be seen, right? So are you so, a woman show? Just me. That's all I, just me. I wear, I wear all the hats. I do the reception. I do the accounting, the bookkeeping. I do the therapy. I do I do everything. So everything in business is just me. So, so how busy are you? <laughs> we're, we're getting there. We're getting there slowly, slowly. So when we first started, we had a couple of clients and everything, and it, everything grows over time. We've only right. been open for a little over two years. So it's steadily getting there. We're about uh, around 20 or 25 clients or so that we see regularly. Um, others we see once in a while for maintenance sessions. Where is this going and what do you find? I mean, I guess, I guess we understand what inspired you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, your love of animals and, and it, it, isn't it interesting how you can create a business out of the passion that you have and yeah. then you find just like a missing little spot and you go, yeah. I, I'll take that spot. I'm going to go fit For into sure. that and, and service that, in, that area. Yeah. I've always wanted to be a supplement to the regular medical team, right? I, my, my, my goal is not to push the vets out or anything. I want to work with them. Absolutely. I want to work with their clients, work with their patients. I want to be a supplement to their medical team that's already been put in place, right? And I want to make sure that the pets have access to all these therapies that humans have access to, right? Like, you know, just because you see your chiropractor or your massage therapist doesn't mean you don't see your family doctor anymore. It's all part of your own medical team. And that's why I want to keep doing that for pets. I want to be able to be a part of that healing journey for them, right? Well, I think that if every Everybody goes to like there's certain times when you need a specialist right yeah you've got your generalist or you've got the guy who's managing everything yes but then someone is doing this body part that thing that treatment and everybody's yeah. doing because you go deeper and be more yeah. special in it yeah and do you find that um, 
the pets are healing faster, any changes? Oh yeah, no, it's incredible. I mean, the my first few patients I had, uh, Arwen, wonderful German Shepherd Akina mix, gorgeous. She was one of my first patients. And she had uh, a, what, what we call an ECL tear in the knee. Mm -hmm. um, very common with dogs, they usually uh, you know, tear that area. And uh, we, she was went through surgery, had the whole thing, and then within seeing me for, well, after surgery, she was completely mobile. Like she couldn't walk on it. it was, she was really in pain. She saw me for two sessions. She was in the harness walking with her dad outside after two sessions. That's only like two weeks worth of, uh, of seeing me. And then after four sessions, she was off of the harness and she was running around the backyard again. Like wow. nothing had ever happened. So it's it's pretty quick how fast these therapies work. Now, not every patient's the same. Right. They're all individuals and they all respond differently to treatments just like we do. Some take a little bit longer than others, but we do see a very quick, results. We see p patients will and clients will message me the night after I've already come and seen them. They're like, we already see results just after one session, right? So that's, it feels good. It feels good to see, see that difference right away, you know, because a lot of things are very long term in the vet field and you don't really see results for months or well, years I think, at a time. I think the whole, the whole concept of veterinarian, like I love my animals and, 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 um, but veterinarian medicine, it's expensive. You go to a vet, it's it can expensive. Be. Yeah. The yeah. surgeries are expensive, you know? Yeah. And when you do the surgery, and I have seen this where there's, because we, we take our dogs out all the time, right? And they socialize. So you meet a lot of dogs with yes. a lot of different issues here yeah. and there. And I've met dogs that are disfigured because of after their surgery, surgery yeah. the surgery didn't take properly or yeah. they didn't heal properly. And then that, Never goes away. Yeah, and it's almost a shame. It's all, it's so sad because you see them that they can't really run the way they're supposed to or stand the way they're supposed to. They don't have the strength. Yeah. and the and the thing would be to redo the surgery. But a lot of pe time people don't know that they've hurt their pet in the in the aftercare. Yeah, sometimes that happens, right? And that's why I, I hope that with being able to talk about it, we can let the vets know that this is an option for their clients to go to, right? That uh, th as soon as they're done the surgery, that we can start doing the aftercare for them, so we can have the best outcome for that patient, right? So do you work with veterinarians now? Do do you? Oh, yeah. How do people get to know about you? Like so so is it you are talking to the general public or are you um, talking to veterinarians and saying here I am or are you doing yeah, both? Yeah, like, it's a bit of both, right? I mean, a majority of the general public kind of finds me on other social media through Google, like they search up my website. Um, but a lot of vets are reaching out to me, and I, I actually partner with clinics all the time, that's and so I smart. become their main rehab person that they reach out to, and I work with all of their patients, even if they have surgery, if they have a neurological patient. Or even if it's just a regular, like every day, and the owner's interested in doing alternative therapies to help maintain the good physical health, they'll they'll call me and be like, "Hey, I've got another client for you." So I I want to work with them. I want to mm -hmm. be able to give back and make sure that they have the support that they need because the vets are busy already. They're overloaded. They're understaffed. So they don't have time to do the rehab themselves, right? I'd rather do it for them and be able to make sure that that client keeps coming back to see them because their pet is healthy enough to come back for their annual exams and their vaccine and everything. That's what we want. We want to keep them healthy for longer so they can keep coming back to their doctors, right? So that's why I work directly with vets because I know that they could use the service. No, absolutely. Yeah. I'm thinking that that would be the like the main kind of area who you would who you would talk to. I mean, I know at the end of the day, it, mm -hmm. when if a vet is working with you yeah. and they know that okay, I'm going to do this surgery, and then I can almost guarantee an outcome because you healing hearts take over at this part, and yeah. it's two sessions or six sessions. But yeah. you know, we do this anyways. Like when you get a, a facial or a PRP or microneedling, they always say you need four or six sessions. And yes. You go, so this okay, you've got the treatment done, and now you're yeah. going to go get the sessions done. Exactly. Exactly, yeah. And then the majority of my patients I, I see throughout their lifetime because even though they've passed that main you know, treatment phase for after like an injury or even just for maintenance, I still see them monthly just to check in, make sure everything's going well, do maybe a top-up session, uh, top up some laser ultrasound, make them, make them feel good and continue from there, right? And that's what's great about it is that even after an injury and after an incident or something, we can continue doing it all throughout the lifetime. There's no like maximum that you can't, you have to stop doing it at. Right. So. What about somebody who loves, like Darius, my husband, he loves German Shepherds. So he loves Aww. that breed and that yes. breed is like hip hip issue breed, right? They are predisposed to <laughs> quite a bit, yeah. Right? So yeah. So if you if you just love these breeds mm -hmm. that always have these wonky like we used to have a Bernese and the he was over they were overbred, so his yeah. joints were really bad. I mean oh, the I'm poor so guy sorry. didn't even last four years because <sighs> he was so overbred and and yeah. his, anyway. I'm so um, sorry. Yeah, I, I just he was the, Dewey was the best. But anyways, yeah. my, I guess my point is if you 
if your heart is with a certain breed, yeah. right, and they have these predisposed issues, does this help them? Oh, definitely. 100%. I always say prevention is the best medicine, right? We want to make sure that we're starting them early from even if from like a puppy moving forward, mm -hmm. um, being able to introduce these therapies to them early so the body recognizes it. It's the same thing like if you get a vaccine, right? The body takes in the vaccine code, the DNA copies it, and then the body recognizes it the next time it receives it, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with the therapies. The body receives the therapy, it processes it, what is it, what is it doing? And so if we start it early, then it's able to keep processing it, understanding what it's meant to do and it, the body can accept it fully and start healing, right? So if you, the earlier the better. And if for all those breeds that have those predispositions, it definitely helps them going forward because we're preventing further issues. So if they're about to develop hip dysplasia, we've already started something. Yeah, you're starting so, to work on comp like straightening that exactly, up. Exactly, exactly. Working on strengthening the limbs, strengthening the muscles and keeping it going. So even if that pet does unfortunately get diagnosed with something, you've already kind of started the treatment process. So they're not gonna be as a drastic end, right? It's gonna be, they're gonna live longer, have a better quality of life and be able to live with that condition. And usually you're, you're going to like help to reduce that inflammation, keep that oh, range sure. of motion, get that strength yes. in there, and then uh, maybe even, you know, prevent it from becoming more chronic. Because I, th I think what happens too is people just accept it and say, this is, yeah. you know, he's he's eight, he's yeah. nine. This is, but yeah. it doesn't really have to be that It doesn't way. have to Not be anymore. that way. Yeah, and it can start at any age too. I have a lot of senior clients and patients I work with and they t it adds years onto their life. It's incredible. Yeah, I think that's really important because we mm -hmm. want them to be buddies, right? Oh, yeah. I had this guy. Uh, he loves squirrels. He loves chasing oh, squirrels. Yeah. And um, he has caught quite a few squirrels. Oh, geez. I always eh? think he catches the dumb ones. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's like, how did you catch a squirrel? Yeah, at least but he's it, successful. Yeah, he's very him. successful. My he's, he's caught over 10, actually. Wow. Yeah, oh, yeah, my yeah, goodness. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You couldn't tell by looking at him, eh? Oh, no. He's very good. <laughs> and he takes his time. He's very patient. Oh, my goodness. But there was, it was really interesting because. Well, we walk around the university, mm -hmm. and he was chasing a squirrel. And then I always, I, I, I walk him off leash, uh, you know, so he's yeah. running around the university doing his own thing. And he likes to play with me, too. I always, I call him Kato sometimes, because he jumps out of some bush or something and tries that. to attack me. And oh, like, he my just plays goodness. With me like this. Has fun with that. It's fun. Mm -hmm. So I'm walking one day with him, and he's playing with the squirrel. And then he's behind me, and he's walking behind me like a panther, right? Interesting. Very interesting. And I yeah. thought, look at you, monkey. You're playing. And I thought he was trying to sneak up on me. Yeah, yeah. So I stopped, and he continued walking towards me. And but he wouldn't change his pace. So as he got close to me, yeah. I noticed that um, he didn't do that, that, that dance that they do, like, you know, when they, when they want to play. When they want to play. Yeah, yeah. So I went up to him and I touched him and he started screaming. Oh. And then I, I didn't know how to take him home. Yeah. Because everywhere I touched, he screamed. Yeah, yeah. His back. And it, it was almost six or seven months of not knowing what to, I wish I had known you because it was not knowing oh what goodness. to do with him and we went yeah. to the vet and the vet did like they, the vets basically say dogs especially yeah they they're terrible patients because they don't really <laughs> tell you where the pain is yeah and they hold a lot of pain they have very high tolerance yeah and then you're like you're guessing yeah and, and I, I didn't know what to do yeah I think that's the hardest thing that a lot of pet owners go through is that they don't and, and vets too I mean it's hard to kind of tell where to go to go from here because they don't they can't tell you where it hurts so they can't they can't show you basically right so it comes with a lot of like I guess an innate sense right and when I started in the rehab course the one thing my professor drilled in us is you have to have that natural sixth sense to look at that pet and you have to see where they're having that discomfort and pain you have to watch their gait watch the way that they walk watch what would they do like their behavior everything it's it's all in tune with it right and so it's hard for an average pet owner to see that because it's just something that you know you don't know unless they do like a yelp or they do like some sort of big reaction right because you're not looking for the little signs uh, and that's why I'm really happy that I was able to learn and to discover was that t given time with my medical knowledge and being in the rehab course we, I was able to find all those little nuances of what is what is the signs of pain and what's not, right? Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's interesting. And a lot of clients I go to see, they, they'll they be like, oh yeah, my pet's fine, normal. I'm like, great, we'll do this a normal maintenance session. I find that while I'm working on that pet, I'm finding muscle aches, I'm finding tears, I'm finding muscle knots and things that the owners would never have seen unless I had pointed it out, right? So right. it's always good just to even do just a regular maintenance session just to see, right? Because you never know what could happen. And things like that where it's like a, a random thing where all of a sudden he's a very hyper 
sensitive to pain, right? It's something must have happened, but it's no idea what to do, and you can't even ask him, right? So it's always good can't just, ask to, him just and to then, check. And then you and yeah. you and you're guessing what if he should have medication. They don't really want to X-ray because yeah. they don't know if they have to start X-raying. There's they were even telling me we're gonna have to X-ray the whole body. We're, we yeah. don't really know, and yeah. then you may not see anything for right? sure. Yeah. So it's always like time, and then. Mm -hmm. Um, they're sitting there and I also think that then they get depressed but if they had yeah. somebody come and move them like I, I, yeah. I'm afraid to do it yeah I want to do it, but I, I am afraid because I like I, I don't want to hurt my dog. No, I understand. And you want to have that resource you can reach out to so someone's there, right? Absolutely. And what I love what I do is for my, my consultations and for my exams, I actually use a thermal infrared imaging camera. Oh. So it takes thermal images of the body and it shows me the areas of pain, discomfort, inflammation. So you can see it. So you can actually pinpoint it. And it's something visual that the owners can see and they're like, oh my God, now we know why he would yelp every time we touch that area. Do you or, have that here? Oh, I actually, you know what? I left it at home. Oh! I, I took a we should have done out. a demo oh. to show people just so people could see. So so basically, even if mom's the word, the dog yeah. or cat is not saying anything, you can come in. So if you yeah. so if someone is saying, you know, my animal is not quite right. Yeah. They can call you. Yeah. And you can come and take a look. And take a look. And, and so see, this yeah. could be something like when we need a good massage or yeah. while we need a stretch. Yes. While we need something different. That exactly. we don't have to go to our doctor, but we can go to somebody who's going to give us some self care. Exactly. Right? Yeah. No, for sure. I really then, like that. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I think it's I think it's great that it's another resource they can reach out to and we're working with the vets because every client I see they have to have a vet referral to work with me, right? Oh, you need a law. vet referral. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. so we could just can't Call you. you can call and book in a consultation. We can talk and I can send you the forms and all that. But uh -huh. in order to work with any client, I need a vet referral. And okay. that's just by law because I'm a reg I'm a registered vet tech, right? So we work with under the scope of practice through veterinarians. Okay. Um, so we do need referrals. But it's great because if I'm working on their patient, I'm having that communication open with the vet clinic. So even if you they call me in to come for a maintenance session or anything like that, they have the records right away. Your vet knows everything. They know the path that your pet's been on. They know the, the what I've seen, my reports and everything. So they already have a full picture of what's going on with the patient. So you don't oh, cool. have to re-explain everything to your vet of what's been happening during the therapy appointments. They already know. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, how can pet owners support their pet's rehabilitation and recovery? Oh yeah, so we, when I work, any client I work with, they get free access to, we have an exercise uh, program portal that they can log into. And I create, I custom create every single treatment plan and every single exercise program for them. So even after I've left, they have an at-home care system that's already set up for them. It has videos, it has written instructions, it's got everything they need, right on a computer or any mobile device. They can even print it out if they're older and they want to be able just to read it and highlight yeah. and all that stuff. Because um, I have a lot of senior clients that prefer reading it instead of on the computer um, but yeah they can just follow that and they're able to do the exercises at home and I'm available 24 7 for my clients so they just call or text me if they have any issues and I'm there right away to help them so yeah can you share some uh, success stories or heartwarming story uh, heartwarming <laughs> <laughs> can you share some success stories like yeah like I, I love to hear like what ha you know for sure someone's road to recovery here. oh yeah no I had a so I had a German Shepherd uh, patient he was about uh, six years old okay and he was starting to have hip dysplasia so they they started him on uh, cartrophin injections which are with the vet which are um, it's like an orthopedic injection it's great for bone it's great for pain and it kind of helps with mobility and arthritis um, so they started him on that he wasn't really responding too well so they moved him to Labrella which is a different injection that just came uh, to Canada through the FDA um, and unfortunately had a bad reaction to the shot not it doesn't happen in every case but right. you know, every patient's different um, and he was paralyzed from the waist down and oh. could no longer move and it was a very drastic reaction to the shot um, you know things happen right and uh, so they had called me I had spoken with the vet they weren't sure what to do where to go from there they had done MRIs they couldn't see what was wrong but he still had the full waist paralysis so I did a look at him through my thermal infrared camera and found that there was no inflammation or anything. It was just more of like a spinal nerve condition. And I started doing laser and this dog, when I had seen him, had not walked or moved for the better part of three months. He was completely paralyzed for three months. Wow. He was wearing diapers. He couldn't control his bowel movements, all that stuff. I did laser on him. I did two spots and he kicked me. 
with oh, really? his back leg. And the <laughs> owner looked at me and she just started crying. I started crying. I was like, oh my God. Like I, it was my one of my first neurological cases and I was just like, I can't believe it. That fast, right? So we started doing more laser with him and ultrasound. And within the course of a few weeks, he went back to fully walking again. Wow. From just a few weeks of sessions and from, they had, no one had any idea what was going on. He'd seen neurologists, the neurologists couldn't figure it out. And yeah, it was just through laser ultrasound and e-stem therapy. We got him back up and walking again in three weeks prior from three months where he couldn't move at all. So it was just, it was incredible. You know, he's one of my greatest stories. I love talking about him. He's great. And How's yeah. How's he doing now? He's doing good. He's doing very good. You know, he's uh, just turned, he will be seven and a half, almost eight now and still walking, still doing good. You know, a little bit of stumbling here and there, but we're still working on his, his, his gait patterning and everything, but he's looking good. He's doing really good. It changed his life. Yeah, no, and, I, and the clients are. It's. it's I, I always. I always love giving back to the clients, right, and seeing them happy, and that's why I live for is seeing them and their pets happy, right. So it just makes my day every day when I see them and I hear about them and they talk to their friends and family about it, and it's great. It's great seeing them have that whole turnaround and continuing on their healing journeys, right. So now that you are a business owner and an yeah. entrepreneur, mm -hmm. how is this different? How you're interacting with animals and what does this mean, like? What is the difference in when you were just work, not just, but when you're working and <laughs> yeah. now that you're an entrepreneur, what do you? I definitely think there's more of like a personable interaction. I, the customer service and client interaction was always my favorite part of working, right? And I was able to meld everything together with this business. So now that I'm, I'm being welcomed into their homes, I'm having, I'm part of their medical team, but also part of like their friends and family. I come in, they, we get to sit, we chat, we're there for two, three hours at a time, working on their pets, and their pets are happy and everything. It's just a great experience, right? And I think when I was working in clinic, it was more, it was always, we keep it professional, always, right? Mm -hmm. um, even when in my business, I keep professional, but I feel like I have more time to get to know my clients because. Mm -hmm. Because in the or vet personal. clinic, you have you can only have 15 to 20 minutes per, per treatment slots, right? So you have to kind of get them in, get them going, ask them how they're doing, and then kind of move them on their way, right? And right. Like any doctor's office. It's, right. it's, it's high volume, right? But with this, I'm able to control the amount of patients I see so that I can give each client the time that they need. Because majority of the time, my clients are, you know, they're venting to me. They're talking about stuff that's happening in their lives. And I'm okay being there and being that person for them to talk with and kind of that person for them to, you know, get advice from and and to just you know shoot the shot right so I love doing that I love being able to be there and be that person so it's really the freedom of being able to yeah. spend more time with each patient and each case so you for can sure. actually give it like as opposed to that 50 like when you're working for somebody else and they're and yeah. they're doing the time management you could have to do like your your productivity has to be at a certain exactly output. Yeah. now you're deciding yeah. this is my productivity because I want to provide this level of service or exactly. I'm not done till it's done. It doesn't matter yeah. if it's 15 minutes. Maybe this dog needs 45 or an hour, but exactly because that's probably where you get that difference in the healing, right? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Right. And you, when, the, when the pet can fully trust you as well and the clients trust you and everyone's relaxed, yeah, it's a whole different it. feeling. Yeah. Like they, their body accepts it. They accept it. There's no nervousness. There's no anxiety. Um, it's, it's just a whole, di it's a whole different feeling for that patient. Right. So, so where are you going from here? What's your plan? What's yeah. your three and five year plan? Keep going. I mean, I, I know that I would love to add in like an actual like mobile like van because mm -hmm. currently I'm working out just my personal vehicle, have all my totes with all my machines and everything. Right. But we're working on within the next, I would say like two to three years, we're going to be retrofitting out a old, either an ambulance yeah, or yeah, old yeah. delivery van. And we're going to make it a full mobile clinic. It'll have all of the equipment built into there and have all the bells and whistles of everything. So we're currently working on that. So that's the, the big goal that we're working towards. And yeah, I get the, you know, it, it's all up from here, right? I mean, we're seeing as many clients, patients as we can. We're always accepting new patients. We'll never stop that. You know, we'll always keep uh, keep so going. So do you have other people working with you at this point? No, no. it's just so, me. So it's just you. It's so just you me. will need to expand. Oh, at sure. I'm so, at some point, for sure, I'll have to add on some new therapists and some different, you know, reception team, things like that. But for now, we're, we're just going to keep trucking on and see how it goes. And, you know, over time, we'll add in, add in as we go, right? So what areas do you serve? It's, so it's all of Southern Ontario and the GTA. So I go as far north as Barrie and Newmarket. Uh -huh. I go as far south as London. 
Um, I go as far out that way as Niagara Falls and the other side to like Ayer, St. Thomas, Orangeville, Tottenham, all the way. Wow. So it's about a one, one, and one and a half hour like drive time that's included within our appointment fee already. I actually do go past that boundary, but then I start charging per kilometer. But as long as they're within that kind of circular area, then there's no kilometer fee. It's just the regular appointment fee that they pay. I think this is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so um, much. What what other trends or advancements are you seeing in, in the care? Where, where is yeah. the medicine going? So you want to go with your business, mm -hmm. you're going to grow. Obviously, you're going to want to scale or, sure. or offer this out because I think the more more people realize that they can do a lot more things at home, oh, especially yeah. supplement to the veterinarian, I think is yes. important. Oh, for sure. Yeah. No, the, the science is constantly evolving. And that's what I love about rehab therapy is that there's constantly new things being introduced and there's new technologies being developed and new things being upgraded. Um, there's a lot of work happening right now with light therapy. So not just infrared laser light, but also other types of light therapy. So we use blue light for dermatology. Mm -hmm. well, what if we were to use that to help reduce fat in dogs, mm -hmm. right? For, mm -hmm. for obesity and weight loss cases, mm -hmm. or even for like, like dealing with lipomas and other kind of cells, right? Trying to get rid of that fat so we can reduce the size of those tumors, right? Like there's, there's a lot of interesting therapies coming out with that with light therapy. So, so we'll see how that goes. For, so for your business, so yeah. you have to have, what equipment do you have and what kind of output did you have to do? I mean, this is not an inexpensive business to set up. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> um, so we have the uh, the infrared uh, thermal imaging camera, which takes the infrared images of the body. So that's, that's expensive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have the... Big expensive. Yes. <laughs> we have the uh, laser the laser therapy. It's a class 3B laser from Theralase. Uh, we have the, it's a uh, ultrasound and e-SIM combo machine from Chantanoga, um, and that does ultrasound e -stim therapy, as well as, um, it can do shockwave therapy too, but I don't do that, I just do e -stim and ultrasound. Um, and then I also have a magnetic therapy loop, so I do magnetic therapy with that, and the rest is just with my hands, so manual manipulation, massage, um, things like that, ISTM therapy, it's the list goes on, we do quite a bit. I think the only thing we don't currently do is the underwater hydrotherapy, uh -huh. but we're at, planning to add that so into the a van. Tank with you? Yes, we're gonna <laughs> add that into the truck, so so it's yeah. all going to be built in. The plumbing will be built into the truck as well. And yeah, it'll be a full, it'll be a full moving mobile clinic, which I'm really excited for. So this really has the equipment in there. So you've got the, the therapies in there. So yeah. you're not just coming and, and massaging and manipulating. So yeah. I see this trend on TikTok and a lot of them. And I do, I do watch them because I do think they are satisfying. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. it was chiropractors with the dogs. Yes. But do you have any... Um, cautions about this or any interesting pieces of advice? You know, chiropractors are great. They're fantastic for manipulation and everything, as well as uh, resetting the bones and resetting the joints and allowing them to breathe because they get pretty tight and stiff. Um, I, you know what, just do your research. Make sure that the chiropractor you're seeing is someone who is experienced, who has the certifications, who has the knowledge uh, to work with your pets. Because um, we see it, we, we do see a lot of uh, human chiropractors moving into the animal field as well and getting certifications through that. So they do need to re be re educated in that. For sure, yeah. I mean, it's all, it, it might be the same names for some of the bones, but they're all in different locations, right? I mean, so it's kind of like you have to kind of reteach yourself. Yeah. how to do certain movements, right? So as long as clients are doing their research and they're taking the time to talk with that practitioner and seeing if they are um, if they know their stuff before they get started with their pet, then that would be the only caution I could say. But that's with everything, you know? Like, exactly, well, you know, I agree get, with that. Get a second opinion, do your research, like take a look at what they've got and kind of go from there, right? I, I, I just think it's, I, I, I just think that animal care is becoming so important, you yes. know? Yes, yeah. Um, people are caring more for their animals than they care for themselves, I think, or even for their own family members. Like pets yeah. mean so much to us. Definitely. And yet, um, and we think that if we just support a vet or whatever, but there's more that we can do. So this continues that, but it does continue with the science. For sure, yeah. And I think a lot of people, like they, they're starting to, to, to move into the thought that a pet is no longer just a property or just a thing or just just something to have in the house. Chattel. It's <laughs> Yeah, it's it's part of the family. It's a, it's, a, it's a being that you care for that gives you unconditional love and no judgment. It's there for you no matter what. And, you know, I think uh, everyone's kind of changing the narrative on that right it's kind of moving from oh it's just a farm dog or it's just the dog in the house no it's it's your family right but if it is a farm dog though don't mm -hmm. you want that farm dog to be in the best top shape to be so able to work running yeah. like a you know like a lean mean machine <laughs> exactly. and got the mobility and he's like 
exactly. he's right there. You know, they're athletes too, right? And just like athletes, they need work, right? And that's why we work with a lot of sporting and work dogs. You know, I work with a lot of dogs that are doing competitions, a lot of dogs that do, um, they actually have a job to do. So they work on a farm and they're herding or they're doing their protection dogs, things like that, right? And they all need a bit of TLC too and to make sure that they can maintain that body so they can continue doing their work. So somebody who is wanting to get into this field, what do yeah. they study? What do they do? Yeah, so you would have to go um, get your veteran technician degree. Mm -hmm. um, so I got mine at King King City Seneca College. Great college. They're fantastic there. Um, once you've passed that, you have to be registered with the government. So you have to write your, what they call the VTNE exam, which is the, the national exam for vet techs. Um, and when you're registered, it gives you, it gives you your uh, accreditation to be able to own a rehab practice or to even be able to work in different sectors of the field. Um, so it's always good to have that. You don't necessarily have to, but it's great to have it for, you know, for anything for legal reasons and things like that. Um, and then you have to go take a rehab course. So there's the only rehab course that's in Canada is in Northern College in Timiskaming, Ontario. Uh -huh. um, and that's the one that's here. The only other one is in Tennessee, at the University of Tennessee. So there's the only two programs. Two in North America. Two in North America. There's only two wow. programs that we're aware of that currently they're running um, that have the accreditations that you can use vice versa between the states and in Canada as well. So. And how long does this take? Um, so depending on which course you go to, the University of Tennessee, you can actually specialize to do other animals. So you can do like large for horses, cows, things like that. Um, that is a four-year program. The one I did in uh, Northern uh, College at Temiskaming is a two-year program. But that's two years on top of your vet tech. On top of the vet tech, which and is another two years. As two years. Yes. So yeah. this could be this could be a four-year or a six-year program. For sure. Just the education. Full Just time. the education. Yeah. And then you've got to do your hands-on. Yeah. And and your hands-on, your co-op hours, and your registration exam as well <laughs> so it's it's quite a bit of a trek but once you get it it's it's so incredibly rewarding it's really good mm -hmm. well and I just think that the, that you're, you're guaranteed work right oh for sure I mean there's a lot there's so many places you can get into even if you can't get in if you don't want to work in general practice you can work with insurance you could work with a mobile vet you could work with um, the exotic fields you could work in a lab you could do testing and diagnostics there's so many areas you can get into as an RVT so I think that this is really good. So people who love animals or yeah. people who are saying, you know what, maybe you don't want to work in an office environment and maybe you don't really want to hang around with a lot of people and you yeah. want to be around with more animals. There is so much more you There's can so do. much out there. Yeah. You're giggling about not having you know, <laughs> But sometimes, but you know, some people are like that. Some people yeah. prefer their time. Yeah, everyone's but, different and learns differently. And pe some people are more hands-on and don't want to be necessarily like in the middle of things. Some people love surgery, but don't love the other stuff, right? So there's so many areas you can get into. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like this. I love the mobile part. I love mm -hmm. the part that you're able to go and take care of them one on one. And it's yeah. not just because I have I think I have a, I mean, you know, I, I think I have a very good vet. A very good. I have no <laughs> I have no complaints. Yeah. But I understand they're also running a business and mm -hmm. I understand just like my doctor, they've got X number of minutes and there. And if you're using an insurance company, there's something yeah. like there's all this stuff. This sure. other part of going that extra mile. Yeah. And also being able to do the aftercare. And and I like the fact that, you know, this is this is not just somebody who said, I feel like I'm gonna start helping animals. This you actually have the training, the education, the equipment. <laughs> You, you know, you're certified, there is a registration process. I mean, this is a very legitimate kind of yes. career. Yeah, no, definitely. And I, 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 what I want to strive for is always education. Education yes. has been the biggest thing in my life. My mother was a teacher and she just recently retired, uh, but she always told me that education is going to be your biggest thing to, that's going to be your backbone for Absolutely. anything, right? Um, so I'm constantly learning, even with my accreditations, I'm constantly getting going for continuing education credits and doing first aid classes and learning like literally anything and everything that I can learn about because I just love the knowledge of what's going on in the world, right? And being able to keep up with the therapies because we have to be able to be open-minded when we're in this field. We have to be able to accept that there's other stuff that's going to be coming in. And I want to learn. I want to learn all about it. I want to learn all about the new medications that are coming out. I want to learn about all the new supplements that are coming out, all the new brands that are starting, new, new businesses that we can partner with and work together and just help the patient as a whole, right? I think in the in, in the pet industry, mm -hmm. um, or even just in the, in just any kind of, I think in any healing, like yeah. human and animal, there's so many products that are out there that are 
it's hard, yeah, to know where to go. <laughs> yeah, and especially <laughs> when you go into a, a pet store, it, it, the owners can feel like they're walking in like a an ocean of just like randomness, right? Because you yeah, don't yeah, know this, where to this go supplement, from. supplement, this treat, like exactly. everything has joint health and, yes. and this and for digestion, and yeah. you don't really know, and your animal yeah. is like spinning. Yeah, no, exactly. And that's what I, I love what I do because I'm able to give that advice for my clients for supplements and everything. Right. You can always ask their veterinarian too, yeah. um, but me being there, if they can ask like, hey, what do you think about about this, right? I can kind of give them my advice on different things, right? Because there's a lot of supplements out there that will say they're for joint health or say they're for orthopedic or whatever they got. Um, but you got to read the ingredients. You have to read the ingredients. You have they to read the know. stuff and that's the thing, right? So even if they kind of show or send me a link and say, hey, I'm interested in this, I can read through the ingredients for them and I can read through the percentages and be like, you know what? This, this probably isn't the best thing. Try these other products and see where we go from there, right? And kind of just, you know, to take, take it one patient at a time, right? And uh, try to make as much education as possible. I actually work with a lot of supplement companies that I've partnered with that I'm able to um, give, uh, we give, have, uh, where all of our clients have discount codes and partnership codes with them. So they're able to good. access these good supplements and are able to know which brands that I trust that they can trust for their pets too, right? And so do you that. have that information on your website or do you have that? Yeah, there? so, so the, people will be able to know yeah, if they check the yeah, link below. So the, um, on my website, they can, as soon as they become a client, they get access to it. So it's a private group just for clients mm -hmm. uh, and they'll have access to it we're actually revamping the website so that the website will have an e-commerce shop where they can actually shop all of the products direct from our site on um, one thing so they have to go to all these different websites trying to find all the things right. which is all in one spot for them and they'll be able to access that and it'll be for both clients and non-clients can access that then too so, so that's that'll coming. be a really good source so, yes. so you are building so that is part of what you're building in yeah the yeah so you're going to have a resource where people can go to and look up some supplements exactly maybe look up and get some advice yes like what is uh, what i guess before we end here i want to yeah. know like what's the best thing we do for our pets and what's the worst thing we do for our pets? The, the best thing you can do for your pets is honestly to, to pay attention to them, listen to them, right? Your pets are there for a short time, unfortunately. Wish we could love them forever, right? I can't stand those TikToks no, where no. I'm here for your whole life and yeah. every day is like a, no, I you know, know. it's like, I it's know. like ah! It pulls at your heartstrings, <laughs> right? And that's the thing, right? You gotta be able to kind of look at them and be like, okay, well, what what more could I be doing for you? Or kind of ask them, like, look at their look at their environment. Do they have, do, are they having enough mental stimulation a day? Are they going out and having exercise every day? So they do are, need a walk. Like, oh, for sure, of course. So you know? the walking for Knee sure. walks, yep. And how important is the walk? For, for, for a dog. Incredibly, because you want to be able to load those muscles and to load the joints with weight. And you can only do that through exercise. Um, even with my exercise plans I build out for my clients, the walking is put in there. I right. put in, we have different like things that they can do. There's like walking, trotting, and all that stuff that they can do together with their pets, the videos that they can follow. Um, but we want them to be able to keep moving because as soon as they start lying down and they're not no longer moving, it's just like us. You know, we, as soon as we start lying down sitting and we're no longer moving our body, things start to break down. Arthritis starts to build up. Debris starts to build up on your joints. It's just, it's not good. We want to keep them moving, you know? Even if they are having like an injury or something, you get them in a harness and you help them and you assist them in that walk and you just keep them going, right? As long as they're able to and they've got those pain meds on board and they've got the other therapies on board to help with their pain and inflammation, they're good to go. Keep them walking. So, so one of the best things you could do for your pet is you keep them moving, you keep yeah, them walking. Yeah, for sure. Uh, not keep giving them treats. Because I, <laughs> I, I have this thing where I, I see people and they're just constantly, their pockets are full, yes. and they're just giving their dogs treats yes. and, uh, and pet treats constantly. Yeah. And I just think, this is not the way to walk. It's a pet. lot. And I think that's one of the worst things that we do is that we love our pets so much. We, we love them we too much. We overdo it, right? And I, what I say to those clients, because I have a lot of them, they're like, oh, we just, I did look at their eyes. It's like, you know what? Get yourself a low calorie training treat. The stuff that trainers use like every day, it's a low calorie. It's got not, it doesn't have any sugar or salt or anything in it. Yeah, that's really bad too, because there so, is junk food. There is, there is, you know, Skittles and gummy bear and yeah, <laughs> for yeah, dogs, right? Yeah. So try, try to do like something low calorie that doesn't have a lot of stuff in it that will, you know, satisfy them because they know they're getting something And they don't really good. need very much, do they? No, no, small little things. They don't you know, need like a big happy. bite. They can do a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. 
And even like the, you know, the little like chew sticks and stuff that you guys can get, right? Like even that stuff, that's great for mental stimulation so that they can kind of work away at. So that is good for mental stimulation. Yeah, yeah. As long as it's not like, you know, like a rawhide or anything, because we find that those will crack off and they can cause like irritation with the esophagus and they can cause perforations in the stomach and then the intestinal lining. Um, I would never recommend rawhide. I know there's a lot of clients that do use it. That's their prerogative. What about I bully judge. sticks? Bully sticks, uh, as long as they are the non-hide bully sticks, The right? non-hide bully sticks. Yeah, yeah. So I, there's one that uh, I think Ren's and Pet Value sells it. It's called the no-hide shoes. I give that to my dog all the time. It's great for her. She can sit there for three hours and chew at it. And it's, she's giving herself a little bit of you know, stimulation while I'm working away and doing records and stuff. Because that's important it. too, because you don't want them to be depressed because if they're yeah. depressed too, then they don't heal. Exactly, yeah. And we gotta make sure that they're not bored either, right? Because when they're bored, they'll get into stuff. <laughs> and they'll, you know, they'll rip things and get into things. And, I had a very, you know. I had a very, very smart schnauzer. Mm -hmm. And she, when she got bored, yeah. she redecorated the room. <laughs> yeah. She literally would take, carpets and stuff and shred it all up yeah. so you literally walk in in a room full of like confetti oh and she would goodness. be so happy yeah because she did the thing <laughs> right she gets oh it, you'd my be like, goodness <laughs> um what are we gonna do with you exactly yeah no my girl does that too not the ripping thank god but she's pretty she, she'll rearrange the room right she'll pull chairs out of the way and she'll move tables and she'll do like just just to keep herself entertained right they do need you know? that right? yeah yeah exactly so you got to make sure that you're walking them paying attention to them giving them their time of day you know i always say as long as they can do an hour of play a day i'm happy with that and play is that that is the play with you one-on-one -on -one, or is the play all of it, all that we talked about. Anything, you're, but your pet, what they crave the most is having time with you. Well, he's right? like always with me. He's oh, like glue. Yeah. Yeah. Is, that, is that healthy or is that oh, too yeah. much? No, this no? is fine, yeah. Unhealthy would be if he's like trying to jump into your lap and trying to, you know, just being the Constantly. like. Constantly. Yeah, yeah, or trying to, you know, take over or whatever things, right? This is fantastic. He's so well behaved, you know? Like, yeah, this they're, they're allowed to be with you. They just want to be with you. They want to be a part of your life, right? And some pets are more like they want to be with you, but they don't want to be touched too much because they're not that affectionate. Uh -huh. And that's just, that's their way of showing that they like care about you, right? Is that they're there for you, they're supporting you, physically being there, men mentally and morally and things like that. Yeah, right? he comes into every room where I'm in. He comes in and sometimes <laughs> yeah. just like the Sphinx. He's yeah, like yeah. this and just watching. Oh, yeah. And we think that, you know, if we depose him, he knows everything about everything that's going on. Oh, he's, yeah. Oh, he's yeah. got all the information. Oh, for I sure. was told. Okay, so now I've got you here. I've got to ask some. Oh, for sure. Oh, my God, please, please. I was told that pets just think about their owner. Is that true? The, we have seen a lot of studies that have come out that their pe pets are entirely devoted to their, especially if they have a good owner that loves and cares for them and they can feel that. You know, they, they, they studied the brain and showed that a lot of dogs and cats have the minds of three and four year old toddlers. So they're able to understand words, they're able to understand emotions, they're able to understand how you're feeling, your tone of voice, all of that, right? And they can tell when you're doing something for them, when you're doing something that makes makes you happy, they feel that too, right? And any energy that you're putting off, they're reciprocating that, right? So they, they know, they for sure know, they know exactly what you're talking about. And they know when they've done something naughty as well, right? You know, they, they know, right? So it's just it's just one of those things where you gotta, you gotta learn your Pet. You guys take the time to sit down, learn their quirks, learn how they are, and give them that time of day and just spend time with them. That's what they want, right? And if you're able even just to do an hour a day, that's all they need, right? Yeah, so I, I, do, can they tell time? Do they know? Oh, like, 100%. Because yeah. I, I used to believe that <laughs> if you left the house for four hours, for yeah. them, it, it didn't matter. It's like 15 minutes. They don't realize yeah. it's four hours. But I do think, they know? I think they can tell time in terms of their meal planning, right? So ah. you feed them at a certain time in the day and a certain time at night. They know when food's coming, right? Okay. And that's just an innate sense that even for us, we have like, oh, well, I'm getting hungry. It must be lunchtime, right? Right. Um, in terms of for them, yeah, they, they know when you're coming home, they know when you're going, especially if you have a very routine schedule, they'll, mm. they'll learn it for sure. Um, and they'll, you know, they'll be able to anticipate things, right? And that's why we always tell, especially for, even for kids and for pets, you want to have a structured routine so that they're able to follow something throughout the day. It kind of gives them that structure that they need, right? It, it works great for children too, right? So. I find them fascinating. Last week I went to go visit, I had to do a seminar and I, and uh, I went to, uh, go pick up somebody. Yeah. Uh, and they're in an apartment building, and I think they're like on the tenth floor or something. <laughs> so I went down, uh, you know, into the concierge to to say, you know, I'm here to pick this person up. And they were down within a minute or two, and they said, I knew exactly when you came into the building, and I was wow. like, oh, because because Bailey went, you know, the yeah. dog started getting all excited. Oh yeah. Like, 
How the dog even know? <laughs> I didn't even know where I was. <laughs> yeah, no, it's funny because whenever I walk into a client's house, the dogs are at the door and they're like, oh, they already knew you're coming, right? And, and whether they heard me pulling in or they heard me getting my stuff together or they just kind of saw the time because a lot of them I do see for regular regular scheduled appointments at the exact same time every single day, they know when I'm coming, right? And it's and it's nice to walk in and they're happy to see you and they're so excited. You know, it's a, it's a, whole, it's a whole good feeling, yeah. Yeah, it's got to be a really good feeling. <laughs> oh, for sure. Um, I guess we talked about the events, treatments. Is there anything else that you want to share? Well, about? I definitely want to talk about that. We, my my biggest passion. On also with working with clients and working with pets is being able to give back to the community. And what I do is that I I firmly believe that no matter what an owner's situation is, no matter what that client is going through, their pets deserve that health care. So I am passionate about giving back and I do, um, I have income assistance programs, I do discount plans, I do help with seniors, uh, people who are on a fixed income, so ODSP, welfare, EI, SERP, things like that, you know, fall in the hard times. They still want to give back to that pet. And we do, so we have those discounts programs for them so that they're still able to afford and pay for gas and groceries and the pay their electrical bill but not have to worry about also making sure that their pet gets the care that they need right so that's why we do that and um, we give discounts back we work with active and retired military we work with the police fire um, frontline workers um, the list goes on we, we have a whole list on our website of people that have access to those discounts and they can contact us at any time and so you're talk taking about away that. any kind of obstacle so someone for can sure. say it's I can't afford it you can we exactly. will, there, will, there will be a way you'll figure this out exactly we also have uh, we have budgeting plans they have they can do payments as well so they don't have to pay a full invoice on time they can literally just do a payment plan whatever works best for them I make it work right because I know that that pet needs that care and I know that it makes them feel good that they're able to get it to their pet right because it's nothing's worse than when, when I was working in clinic and they're like oh well this is how much the surgery is gonna cost we're like well I can't afford that and then yeah. having to make a decision whether they 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 get food for the month or they help their pet and that was always the worst feeling for me and sure there's foundations out there there's um, there's some pet um, vets will have like the aftercare client program so they'll have the scratch pay and things like for 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 payment plans which is fantastic but not all vets are able to do that right so uh, I want to be able to do that so that if if they're not able to afford something, at least they can do this for their pet, right? Because um, for me, it for me, it's not about making the money. It's not about the income. It's about the betterment of that patient and the betterment of the client too. The peace of mind I'm able to give their owners. That that's what I strive for. See, that's why I think Wake's a really good business. I really Thank think you. that somebody who it's not about the money. It's something. It's something bigger. Because yeah. if you're only in business to make money, yeah. I mean, that's just. A thing. It's a lonely existence. Right? Mm -hmm. But when you're actually creating a community, an environment, a support that yeah. it's like basically saying, you know, this this feeling good is available to every yeah. pet out there and exactly. to every owner out there. Yeah. I think this is really this is a this is very inspiring. Thank you. And this is what I think that is, you know, through the education, you know, starting this business, being empowering, giving, I mean that's got to feel Thank you. No, Great. it's definitely healed me a lot, right? Like, like, do you feel like you're working? Oh no, I, I actually I feel like I'm doing my passion, right? I, every day I wake up with a smile on my face. And when I was working, even when I was working, like I was, I did worked in emergency hospitals. I worked at large animal hospitals in the exotic field. I've worked with all different sectors of the vet industry. I loved what I did, but I never felt that innate. Oh my God, I'm doing something for the betterment more. of the world. I'm doing something more. And now I feel that I've I found that I found that role in life, right? So it's I'm holding on to it as long as I can. <laughs> well, I think this is something you probably never retire from because oh, this yeah. is something that you would just love. Like you oh, can for sure. you can you can scale this and then you can actually do it. Oh, you know, yeah. you can wean it up because mm -hmm. it is something that is you're just giving from your heart, oh, and you're sure. able to make a living out of doing this. For and sure, you're able to change lives. Yeah, my dream is to see it everywhere. I would love to franchise out, work with other therapists, and have these trucks and mobile things going all across Canada and the states and everywhere. I want to be able to help as many people as pets as possible because we're saving lives. That's the main thing. We're saving lives. We're giving hope. We're helping them endure. We're helping them get better. That's. That's everything I want. Well, I think by helping your pet, I mean, I'm just thinking right now of the of the the mental support you're giving to humans as well, because you know, if that is if your pet is your for your mental health and yeah. for your and your companionship and is your family. Yeah. And if you see them struggling, you're struggling. Exactly. But if you see them thriving, 
It's that, such a weight off your shoulders entirely. And that's what all my clients tell me. That's the, that's the main thing and why I love what I do is they'll, at the end of the session, they're like, you have no idea how much you've helped me heal from all of this. Yeah, right? you're the gift through. that keeps on giving. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> no, they, it's, I, I love that. I love being able to give back and I love being able to, to make people and their pets happy. That's what I want to do, right? And that's why I named the business Healing Hearts because as much as it healed me, both mentally and physically from everything, it helped heal my clients, my patients, right? And that's where the, the name came from, the motto comes from everything, right? It's it's all about them. What's your motto? Healing the heart, body, mind, and soul, one pot at a time. One pot at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Aww. That's where it all comes from. <laughs> that so, is fantastic. Thank you. This has been amazing. Thank you so much. I've had such a great time with you guys. No, I'm glad, I'm glad. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think you. this is a, such a great business, such a great idea, such a great Aww. service. And this is, again, it's not, this is for everybody. Yes. Like, you're, you're we're helping our pet. I love this. I love when they're lying on their back and they've got their hoo -hoo oh, up yeah. in the air and they're just oh, pulling yeah. off, right? Yeah, yeah, airing yeah. it out. Airing it out. <laughs> yeah. And, but this is how we want to see them, right? Oh, for sure. We yeah. want to see them mobile, we want to see them yeah. happy. For sure. And then we feel great, yes. right? Yes. And then it's also something, too, I think, as a pet owner, if your pet's not right, then you, you don't know what to do. You feel like, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. You know, and no one, you know what you're doing right. And with your support and support of this information and just yeah. having the access, I mean, I just see it as a win-win. Yeah. Such a great idea. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in for uh, this episode with Gabby from Healing Hearts. And I just, let's say that, that model one more time. Healing the heart, body, mind, and soul, one paw at a time. <laughs>